Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to continue the work with the joystick and Arduino and uh, stepper motors. So as you can see I have a huge chaos on my uh, table right now. So we have two stepper motors. These are sort of NEMA 17 uh, stepper motors and I'm using the TB6600 drivers. In fact I'm using two different drivers in the sense that uh, I guess they come from a different manufacturer because this uh, as you can see it's more shiny because it has a metal casing and it has a bit uh, larger uh, uh, heatsink as well but uh, it contains the same circuit and then uh, here this is a plastic uh, thing but uh, they are uh, the same inside and what you can also see that I have this uh, much better uh, joystick so this is a 3-axis joystick, so you can see one potentiometer here, another potentiometer here, and then one potentiometer is inside this uh, knob on the, on the end of this uh, stick. I don't really want to move because these wires are quite rigid and uh, I think that the wires would just pop out uh, from the sockets here and I just don't want to have any short circuits. And we uh, driving everything with an Arduino Uno here. You can see these kind of uh, special uh, terminals. Uh, what they do, I will explain it in, in short. So uh, basically they are just uh, connecting uh, some certain pins uh, in this. Uh, two stepper motor controllers and then all these uh, wires which are connected to these uh, clip terminals are connected to the plus 5 volt of the Arduino. But uh, I think it's better if I explain how a single uh, stepper motor is wired up with a TB6600 driver and an Arduino. So let's just uh, have a short break and uh, let's see how this is connected to the stepper motor and how you can uh, work with it. So before proceeding towards the deeper details, let's just uh, go through the wiring of the TB6600 and the stepper motor and the Arduino. So you can see that this is the TB6600 unit. This is the other side. Uh, some units have a plastic cover on it. This particular piece has a metal sheet, as you can hear. And everything is uh, here. So all the information that you need uh, can be seen on the surface of this uh, cover and uh, also you have the dip switches here to set the micro stepping and all the information for the micro stepping can be found here. So let's uh, take a look at the wiring and la let's start from the bottom towards the top. So first of all uh, I made this thick cable here it's maybe unnecessarily thick I don't know but this is the power supply so what I did I just used some uh, uh, DC jack, so this is the 2.1 uh, millimeter jack. So if I have a power supply with this kind of uh, ending, I can just easily plug it in. And for me, this makes it very uh, smooth to operate. So here, uh, GND is the ground, that's very obvious. And VCC is the positive uh, side. And it's written here that you need 9 to 42 volts. I usually use something around 20 volts. It's perfectly fine. It works well. And then you have uh, the four connections. So these white uh, crimping ferrules here uh, for the motor. So I have a four wire stepper motor here, as you can see. And I already paired up uh, the wires. So in my case, if you have similar motor, uh, this type uh, then it should be like black and green goes together and red and blue goes together and you have to make sure that you have the perfect polarity so how to make sure that uh, you just use a multimeter uh, select the continuity mode which is something like this so you have a diode and you have this uh, tone signal or whatever it's called and uh, you just attach the uh, probe of the multimeter to each wire so you pair up two wires and see if uh, there is a connection between them 
if for example you hear a beeping sound from your multimeter when you connect uh, these two wires together so the black and the green then they belong to the same and i suggest you to put a loop here like i did on the wire wires so you see that they belong together and then you just continue and it doesn't matter if the if one pair goes down or one pair goes up it might happen that the polarity of the uh, rotation direction uh, flips but uh, you can easily modify it by software so that doesn't matter and then we have the signal part as you can see it here and uh, from top to the bottom you have ENA minus ENA plus and then DIR minus DIR plus this is the direction this is the enable and the PUL which is the pulse you have minus and plus as well so what I did I have this uh, kind of uh, neat stuff so you can just clip your cables in it so I took these regular breadboard cables as you can see and I took all the positive things all the positive wires from the ENA DIR and PUL uh, wires and connected everything together so all the plus from this side uh, from the signal goes to the same terminal and uh, those guys will be wired uh, with another wire uh, to the plus 5 volt of the Arduino so all the plus here are wired together as you can see it here and this thing so you just attach a new cable here another cable and attach it to the 5 volt of the Arduino then uh, you have left with three cables so all the minus parts and the ENA minus is not connected to anywhere so you can see that that is an empty uh, slot there and then you have the DIR which is the direction and you have the PUL which is the pulse so that is corresponding for the step and you will see it in the source code what is the step pin for each uh, motors and what is the direction pin so you have to you basically just have two wires which is directly connected to the arduino and they are sending the signals to this stepper motor driver and that's all so the wiring is very easy you don't really need drawing but i make made one so check that video where i explain everything and uh, you can see all the stuff but uh, you can see that this is a very simple wiring and yeah it doesn't require any uh, rocket science so now you know how the stepper motor uh, can be connected uh, to this uh, driver and to the arduino so let's uh, check what we have here so as i said this is a three axis uh, joystick it has very fine mechanics so it's a really pleasure to work with it and uh, then what i will do is that i move the joystick and that is uh, basically moving a potentiometer so basically it's just this guy uh, attached here but uh, it's a bit better quality than this and then that potentiometer will cause a voltage change on the output of the viper in principle it's on the output in the middle and that change or that voltage is measured by one of the analog pins of the arduino and that value of the voltage is converted into a value of speed which is then sent out to one of these drivers based on which uh, direction i move with the stick and then those uh, signals are converted into signals which are uh, controlling the stepper motors and since I just have two stepper motors, but this is a three axis thing, I put an LED here with a small 150 ohm uh, resistor, and that is connected to one of the PWM pins. In this case, it's uh, pin number three. And uh, I will use the third axis, so this knob here on the top, to modify the brightness of this course now I'm using uh, a lot of lights around this uh, table to make everything visible so you cannot really change you cannot really see the change of the brightness 
but I might turn off some lights and uh, it will be more visible. But now in this case, what I basically did, and I will explain it in more details when I show you the source code, that I convert the readings of the uh, voltage coming out from the potentiometer into PWM values and that PWM value is fed to the LED and by that uh, we can change the brightness either increasing it or decreasing it depending on the direction I move with. So that's all basically. So once again we generate some voltage uh, by changing the resistance of the potentiometer so that will change a voltage drop or that will induce a voltage drop on the output of it, we capture it by the Arduino, then we convert it into steps or speed that is sent out to these two units and the, they are controlling these two uh, stepper motors plus this thing. And now we just have these stepper motors uh, standing like this, but in the next video I will show you this with a real XY table. So I will build uh, a mechanism which we move in, uh, in in a plane so one motor will control the x direction uh, movements and another motor will control the y direction movements and uh, we will see how it works with that but uh, i'm waiting for some mechanical parts so i can only demonstrate this but this will be already enough for you if you want to just have some fun with stepper motors and uh, joysticks and you see that now I have this uh, nice joystick, which is a bit more expensive than uh, than this guy here. But I really recommend you to use this because it has much more better mechanism inside it. So you have a better feedback when you are moving with it. And I think that the potentiometer used in this is much better. So you get a bit less noisy uh, signal when you move the potentiometer. Uh, enough talking, so you saw the system, you saw how to wire up this thing and it applies to any Arduino, to any TB6600, regardless of their things. You just follow the uh, drawings here and yeah, you just have to make sure that everything is wired up properly. So I will move uh, this thing in the X direction and let's see what happens. So if you see this motor moved and now I move it move this towards the right side of the screen very slowly so you see it moves very slowly and now I slowly increase so you could see that if I increase uh, the let's say angular deviation of this uh, joystick then I increase the speed and once again so from the middle I go to the, towards the right side of the screen I'm sorry it vibrates so I need something to hold So, and then if I move it towards the left side of the screen, then we should see that the rotation, the direction of the rotation will flip. So once again, I, I move to, to the right. So this is counterclockwise uh, rotation. So if you see the screw holes here, they are going in that direction. And now I go this direction with the joystick and you see that uh, the holes are coming. So now it's clockwise. Uh, rotation. Of course you can flip this by uh, changing the code and everything. I just wired this up like this. Now we don't care about the directions. But you see, it runs smoothly. Now let's move towards the up and you should observe this uh, motor here. The reason why you hear this ringing noise is because I forgot the screws in this coupling and uh, they are getting a bit loose so they vibrate together with the motor. Now you hear. 
So I guess we found the resonance frequency of it here. So you can see that you can control this movement in very, very fine steps. Uh, you can see the screw coming in and out if I if I find the perfect frequency there. That's very fun. You see it? Here. Look at this screw on the top. It's screwing in itself in and out. So that's uh, some resonancy phenomenon, as you can see. So, and if I move it down, uh, then the rotation should flip. And you see that it now goes counterclockwise, uh, now it goes clockwise, and it goes counterclockwise. And now I turn off the light, and you can see that this has a certain brightness. So now I turn it off. So I slowly come back. And this is the middle. And I increase. So let's turn back the light. So basically this is all what I wanted to show you. So now, uh, before jumping to the source code, you could see that uh, we can uh, control two independent motors with this. So you see they, they move very nicely. And actually we could, we could control a third motor with this. Uh, I mean, replacing the LED with uh, with another motor controller and then by changing the uh, position of this thing up up here uh, we could change yeah let's say a motor or something but you see it works very nicely and it works smoothly so so this is a very good uh, joystick so you could see everything works I will show you the wiring uh, I usually cannot find a model for a, for a good uh, joystick, but as I said, the joystick is basically three potentiometers. So what I will do, and I think that is a better uh, way to demonstrate uh, the joystick, is in the drawing I will just use three joysticks for X, Y and rotation. And then you will be able to understand it more properly. So you will see these guys on, on the drawing and these uh, stepper drivers as well. So yeah, let's jump to the source code and let's see uh, what is happening inside the Arduino when I'm moving the joystick around or I'm just uh, changing the brightness. So let's look at the code and let's see how it works. So I'm using the Excel stepper library as usual. And in this case, we will have to uh, define two different uh, stepper motors. So the default one or, or uh, the one I usually use is, uh, I just call it stepper and I use the pin number 8 and pin number 9 for the pulses and the direction. But in this case, I added another controller, as you could see it, and that is connected to the next uh, two pins, so pin number 10 and pin number 11. And I just call it stepper 2. And you have to be careful how you name them, because uh, it's just to not mix them up. So maybe you want to call it something else like stepper Y axis and stepper X axis, but this is just some uh, general advice. And then we have uh, different pins. And I have four different pins, which are the analog X pin, which is connected to the A0. And then I have the Y pin and the R pin. So A1 and A2. And then basically this is just the three outputs of the three potentiometers and nothing else. So they are just connected to the analog uh, pins of the Arduino. And then I have an output as well, which is the digital uh, pin, pin number three. 
and that is the LED. So you could see that uh, when I change the value actually on this guy, on the R uh, pin, then I change the brightness of the LED and that happens through this uh, pin. And uh, I have to store the values uh, re related to these pins in variables. So I have X, Y and R uh, values and also I have averages and I will tell you why I need the averages. And also I need uh, another value for the PWM. So I have this analog R value uh, variable and that's all. So we just uh, have uh, four pins and uh, three values plus one here. And that's all in the beginning of the code. So in the setup, uh, we have a very easy task. I start the serial because I was debugging the code and I was looking for the changes and everything. So I needed some feedback uh, through the serial terminal. But uh, you don't really need this. Uh, you can leave it here. And then we have the pins. We have to tell that the X, Y, Y and R pins are inputs. In fact, uh, as far as I know, it's not that necessary for analog pins because they are defined uh, as inputs by default, but uh, let's keep it uh, in this way. And then the LED pin will be an output. And I wrote a function here, which is called uh, initial values. And I will tell you what is this, but basically we just have to average the values of the three potential meters uh, for a short amount of time. So that will help us to reduce the uh, noise and uh, stuff. And I just uh, set up the initial parameters for the stepper motor. This is up to you. Uh, these values can be some guidelines for you, but uh, yeah, uh, you have to change this. But what we have to do is we define the maximum speed. We have to define some acceleration and I just set the speed to 500 uh, by default. Mm. And then I wait a little bit and then I do the same for the stepper two, so the other motor. And the loop again, it's very uh, simple. So we are just running one function, which is the read analog and uh, these two uh, commands for the two stepper motors. So basically uh, the loop will go over and over infinitely. And uh, whenever there will be a step, uh, so the code knows that it has to perform a step uh, with the stepper motor, then it will enter these uh, two uh, functions here and uh, perform the step. And yeah, basically this is all. So let's see what is this read analog. So what we do is we quickly read the three uh, potentiometers and we are just using the raw data, so the bits the numbers and we don't care about the voltage itself because the, the voltage is just a proportional number to the analog value and we don't want to see if it is uh, 5 volt or 2 volts or something. So here we read these three values and then we go and check what are these values and here I made a sort of a filter and this is where we will need the other uh, function called initial values. So what we see is that we take the absolute value of the difference between the currently read value, so the value we, which we read here, minus uh, we subtract the analog x AVG, uh, so the average value, and if that is larger than 25, so we are somewhat uh, away from the center position of the of the joystick, then we set the speed according to this formula. And this formula is just my own arbitrary uh, formula. You can modify this up to your own uh, requirements. I just made a multiplier here or put a multiplier here because I wanted to have some speed which makes sense. And then I do this uh, because this can take care of the direction. So for example, if I move it to, uh, to the right, uh, or if I move it in one direction where the analog X becomes larger than the uh, analog X average. So let's say by default, it should be 500 and, uh, 512. And I start to move towards uh, 1023. 
then uh, the value of this starts to increase from 0 to 512. And then that will increase uh, the speed of the motor in one direction. And now I have a positive number. But if I move to the other direction with the uh, joystick, then the analog X will be smaller and smaller uh, than 512. So it will move from 512 towards 0. So then this difference will be always a negative number, but it will increase. So let's say I just move one unit away, then the difference will be minus one uh, times five, of course. And then I move two units away or two steps away uh, with the joystick, then the result will be minus two. So by using this formula, so that means that even if I move towards the negative direction of the of the joystick's uh, movement, uh, I will increase the number here, uh, I mean in the absolute value. So that means that uh, if I use this formula and I move in the negative direction, it will not start at high speed immediately, but it will start from zero, let's say, and then it uh, slowly will uh, increase the speed. And when I uh, tilt the joystick to the maximum, then it will uh, have the maximum speed. So that's why we need the average and that's why we need this subtraction. And then this multiplier is basically just telling you which uh, is the maximum speed and which is the, it's like, yeah, how fast you can go. So that's what we do here. And if nothing happens, so if this formula is not fulfilled or the requirements defined by this if uh, thingy, then we just set the speed to zero. And that means that when this guy, for example, tries to see what speed we should run at and it sees zero, then it will not step the motors. So the motor stays uh, where it is. And then we just repeat the same uh, for the y-axis, so I don't uh, explain it, but uh, again, we just copy-pasted everything and replaced the values of the variables to, to the y. And the r is roughly the same. There is a very small difference that what I do here, and that's where we need this analog r value, is we use this very smart map function. So what you see is that you have an input so for example, you receive your input from the 10-bit uh, AD converter, and then you want to convert it uh, to, for example, the 8-bit uh, PWM uh, controller. So for example, if you are halfway uh, with your potentiometer, so you are at 512, uh, that should be 128 on, on the output of the uh, PWM and this is what the map uh, thing uh, the map function does for you so basically you get this uh, value uh, based on the analog R value and based on the limits of your input and the limits uh, that you want on your output and then using this un analog R value uh, you just write that analog value so the PWM uh, on that uh, pin which is the LED pin in our case. And that's all. So this is the read analog uh, function, which runs over and over here in the loop. And then let's check what does this initial values do. So th this is very simple. So we just have the three variables for X, Y, and R. So the three uh, things in the joystick. And I just run a uh, for loop for 50 uh, cycles. Or 50 loops and at each loop I increase the value of this temp x uh, by the value read from the analog x pin so each time I just add the number uh, to, to the already existing number so the first of course it's zero then we read something let's say 500 then it will be 500 and then we go through the loop and come back here again Next time we read 490, so the temp x will be 990, and so on and so on, and we repeat this 50 times. And after that, we calculate what was the average. So we know that we had 50 loops, 
and then we just divide the uh, temp x, temp y, and temp r uh, by 50, and we get the values. And here, just to check for myself, uh, I read back these values and see if it was successful. And uh, you can check this by measuring the, the value with a potentiometer, with a multimeter, and then you can see that uh, where is the voltage and where is the where are these values. So I have these values, and then these analog x, y, r uh, averages will be used in, in these three formulas here. So these are just that uh, some kind of guidance uh, for your code that the joystick has to move a little bit away from the uh, original position, from the center position, in order to consider that motion as a real motion and not just the noise. Because the analog value will never be uh, stable. And also it can move uh, from time to time because, for example, if you are using a different uh, power source for your uh, Arduino, you just connect it to a different computer or something like that, then the voltage in the 5 volt uh, can be different. And that can cause some problems or if you are using an external uh, power source for the uh, potentiometers, then the 5 volt can be 4.8 or 5.1 or something like that. And therefore your center values so the default values for your potentiometers can shift slightly and that can cause some headache. So the best thing is that just uh, read the values and average them in the very beginning when you start your Arduino and you do everything uh, related to those values. And then uh, that's basically all. So we could see in this code that uh, we just uh, have to read the analog pins quickly and then write uh, the outputs according to those values and that's all. So this was very simple and in the next video related to this topic uh, I will do a mechanical XY table so I'm just uh, waiting for some parts and when I can build that table uh, it will be more easy to demonstrate how useful a joystick can be. So I hope that you learned something I hope that it was interesting and uh, useful uh, please always read the description because I have my website there, curiousscientist.tech and I always have uh, blog posts where I have all the drawings, the circuit drawings, the, and the source code is also there and everything is there. So before asking for the wiring and everything, please just visit the website in the description and you will see that everything is there as well. So feel free to ask uh, questions in the comment and uh, see you in the next video.